Greetings fellow YouTube viewers. It's time for another compendium video. You're looking at your data. Your data is looking right back at you. If you want to know how to convert that data into a nice looking data table and a good looking graph, you've come to the right place. If you already know some stuff that we're going to be talking about, you can pause this video and click on these links to go to the parts that you want to know about. In this video, I'll be using Excel. If you don't have Excel, or don't have the latest version, you can check the link in the description that shows you how to get Excel for free if you're a student. When you're recording your data for your experiment, you, what you don't want to do is use the same technique in order to record it for your lab report. So here's an example of what I was doing. I was changing the mass of sodium carbonate and I was recording the effect on the pressure difference. This is just an experiment that I did. So I did three trials of 0 0.1, three trials of 0 0.2, because the mass was my independent variable, and I got three trials for each value of my independent variable. And then here I had the pressure difference. This was how I recorded it when I was doing the experiment. But then I decided to change it to make it more accessible during the lab report. So you may see that 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 .3, it gets really redundant. So instead of that, I just put 0 0.10, and this is how you should do it. And instead of having to write it three times, you just write it once. And then the three values from here, I put into here. Same with 0 0.2, the three values, instead of writing 0 0.2 three times, I just put one value, and then the three values that I got, I put into here. Now what you need to do is you need to average these. So remember to add an equals to sign then add the three values or the five values, depending on how many trials you did, and then divide them by the number of trials. This is pretty standard stuff. You take the arithmetic mean. Now you don't need to repeat this formula. You can just drag it down. So just select your box and look at the bottom right corner. Uh, select the bottom right corner and just drag it down. And it just copies the formula down. Let's say you have to measure the absolute uncertainty for this 30 centimeter ruler. The absolute uncertainty is half of the smallest length you can measure. In this case, the smallest length is one millimeter because there's 10 dashes between each centimeter and each dash is a millimeter. So the absolute uncertainty for this ruler is half a millimeter. For digital measuring devices, so like this digital weighing scale, it's a bit different. So here we see the mass is 168.65. The uncertainty for this is not 0 0.005 grams, but it's 0 0.01 grams, because digital scales already calculate for that uncertainty. To average the dependent variable, as we did here, you need to also calculate the uncertainty for that. So how do you calculate the uncertainty? Well, simply, the maximum trial, in this case, 7.81, minus the minimum trial, divided by 2. So this is called the range method. There are other methods, but this is the simplest that I know of. So for instance, 16.56 is the maximum, and then 13.47 is the minimum, and you have to subtract the minimum from the maximum and divide by 2. This one you have to do for each and every trial. Every time you have to do it differently because you can't just click here and drag it down because that might give you the wrong results. So make sure you look at which one is the maximum, which one is the minimum, and you subtract the maximum from the minimum. At this point, you have all your data organized and you want to make a graph. How do you do this? You put the independent variable and the dependent variable, right? The independent variable, you just set it equal to the values and then drag it down dependent variable you set it equal to the average of the dependent variables you drag that down all right now it's crucial you delete the heading for the independent variable right and then just drag over this insert scatter plot make sure it's a scatter graph and there you go dependent variable versus your independent variable For those of you who are going to add error bars in the future to the graph, what I would suggest is you change the shape of these bullets. 
So for that, you just double click on the bullets, go to marker, marker options, and change this to X's. You'll see why when you do the error bars, because the error bars are like a plus in the plus direction. It's really helpful for looking at them. You can also change the size or increase the size or decrease. You might end up with more than one sets of data. So here we have sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, and acetic acid uh, with different results. Now, how do you move this legend to the right hand side? You go to chart design. By the way, to add the legend, you can just create here and then add legend, right? And then you just go to the right and this will create a legend on the right or wherever you want to put it. Chart title is really simple. You go to, you double click on the chart, go to add chart element and chart title above chart or centered overlay. Add error bars for your chart. So how you do this is you double click on the chart, go to chart design, add chart element, error bars, more error bar options. Then now you click on the vertical error bars, right? For the vertical error bars, you want to have custom error bars because this is for the dependent variable and these are the uncertainties you calculated. Right? So now you do here and the negative, this is really important. You have to click the same thing for the negative. And it gives you error bars for the vertical error bars. For the horizontal error bars, generally you have error bars of fixed value. So let's just do 0 0.01. And here we have vertical and horizontal error bars for the whole data. Let's talk about adding a trend line. So again, same process, chart design. You double click the chart, chart design, add chart element, and go to trend line. Here you can choose a linear trend line, an exponential trend line, a linear forecast trend line or moving average trend line. You can see from this data it's clearly a linear trend line, but you can use different types. I hope this was useful to you guys. If you found it useful, don't forget to like this video and you might also like some of the other videos. So don't forget to subscribe to Compendium. See you again.